One of the godfathers of indie rock, Bob Mould, at 55, may be more prolific than ever got a new album, it's called Pass the Sky. as a songwriter. You describe it as like putting out a rain bucket. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like I'm just running around catching the rain as it falls. Are you still, are you still driven to write? Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I have music in my head 24-7. Really? Yeah, it just goes and goes and goes. I mean, that's all I hear is, is music. <laughs> Mold, whose song Dogs on Fire, has long been the theme for The Daily Show, first envisioned a life in music while growing up in the farming town of Malone, New York. That's where he first laid hands on the debut album of the Ramones. Well, it's like, wow, they look like a gang. It looked like so authentic compared to you know, the, the, the sparkle and the glitz of heavy metal. Uh -huh. and, and then when I heard the music, you know, it was so elemental. And I was like, I think I could probably do this. This seemed attainable. Attainable. At 17, he went off to McAllister College in St. Paul, Minnesota. <laughs> and formed the punk band Husker Du with Grant Hart and Greg Norton. The three of us were very driven. Driven to do what? Just make music. Mm -hmm. um, sculpting the sound. That, was, that became very fast, very abrasive, blurry punk rock, sort of taken to an extreme. The band cut its teeth at Minneapolis's famed First Avenue Club, where Prince also played. By the mid-80s, Husker Du was making noise with critics, too, and landed a deal with Warner Brothers. Could you be the one they talk about? becoming the first punk band to sign with a major label. People were elevating the band's cause and putting us alongside R.E.M. or U2 or people like that. Then I thought, hell yeah, I can do this for a while and I'm pretty sure I can do it better than any of them. <laughs> but Mould was also keeping a secret in the 80s, his sexuality. It had to be difficult going into the music business when you did and, and knowing you were gay. When I look back on it, and people look at my work in Husker Du and they're like, what were you so angry about? I'm like, well, put yourself back in the middle of 1983. You know? it's a lie, it's a sham. And the leader of the free world can't even bring himself to name the disease that's killing his friends. Mm -hmm. You'd be upset too. Mold would have his greatest commercial success with his second band, Sugar, in the 90s. before going solo. His recent work, including his latest album, Patch the Sky, is considered something of a career renaissance. Did you ever expect that in your 50s you'd have one of your most creative and critically lauded periods like Absolutely you're having? Absolutely not. No. <laughs> Absolutely not. When I started, you know, you know, punk rock, you know, we it had that certain strain of nihilism. Yes. You know, that touched back to that hope I die before I get old. You know, I didn't think I was going to make it to 30 the way that I was living. You've had a lot of different chapters or episodes mm -hmm. in your in your life mm -hmm. musically. Um, why is that? I don't know. I have no idea. I can, maybe it's like that AM radio where I keep changing the channel. <laughs> All that static in between is, is, is equally as interesting. Yeah. Um, I don't know, I'm a bit of a wanderer. So how would you describe this chapter? Uh, bonus round. 